Okay, so welcome to this next video in which we are discussing uh, the construction of the field of fractions uh, for an integral domain. Okay, so uh, what we have done now is we have defined addition and multiplication on this set of equivalence classes, okay, and um, we've proved that they are well defined operations. Now, what we want to prove is that this set of equivalence classes are uh, where we've divided up the set of fractions into these equivalence classes uh, is going to uh, form a field basically under these addition and multiplication operations that we've defined. Okay, so we now just have to check all of the field axioms, all ten of them or whatever. Okay, uh, so we're at the moment making sure that it forms an abelian group under addition. Okay, so the first um, identity of the uh, abelian group is that you need an identity uh, uh, sorry, the first uh, axiom of a abelian group is that you need an identity element. Okay, so we've agreed that this equivalence class, where you have zero in the numerator and then every possible element from the domain apart from the uh, identity element, uh, the additive identity element, in the denominator, that equivalence class is going to form our additive identity. Okay, so, so far we've proven that uh, if you take any equivalence class and add it to this other equivalence class which contains all of these fractions which have zero in the numerator that this will give us back our, um, our original equivalence class. Of course we do also need to show it the other way round. Now eventually what we'll do is show that it's commutative, uh, a commutative operation but for now we haven't shown that yet so we also need to show that uh, the identity equivalence class plus any other equivalence class on the uh, right is going to give back that equivalence class. Okay, right. Uh, so, um, our representative, our arbitrary representative of the equivalence class alpha was this A over B element and our arbitrary representative of E was 0 over, well, anything, which could have been C. So what we need to do is construct this fraction from these two um, representatives. So 0 uh, over C, we're going to combine with A over B. Okay, and how do we do that? Well, we need to take 0, we need to multiply that by B, and we need to add that on to C multiplied by A. Okay, and then we need to do that over CB. Okay, now 0 times b in the, uh, whoops, sorry, uh, in the um, integral domain is going to be uh, 0, okay, so the additive identity. So we're adding on the additive identity to c times a, uh, which is just going to give c times a, okay, ca over cb. So now all we need to show is that ca over cb is then equivalent to ab, but of course this is going to be true because ca over cb is the same thing as ac over bc. Uh, because the uh, domain was commutative with respect to multiplication, uh, and since we've already shown that that fraction was equivalent to AB, uh, then we're done, basically. So, if you add this equivalence class containing uh, fractions of this form uh, to an equivalence class, any other equivalence class you like, you'll always get a member of this, that original equivalence class back again, basically. Okay, so we have an identity, so we can tick that axiom off, so I'll put number one, we have proven that there is an additive identity. Okay, so that's a good start. Now what we want to prove is associativity. Okay, so again, this is the norm normally the very, very difficult property to show uh, in algebras, but we're going to use the fact that the domain, we know the domain is associative, and uh, that's going to help us a lot. Okay, so we want to take three equivalence classes, basically. So, again, let's draw this picture that helps us so much. So, uh, here is the set of all fractions. So, all things of the form A over B, where A is any element of the domain, and B is any element of the domain except zero. They're all in here, okay? And we've then partitioned it up into these equivalence classes, okay? And let's say we have three equivalence classes now, alpha, let's say beta, and gamma down here. Whoops. Okay, so let's colour those in, just because it makes it look easier on the eye, because then you can instantly just look at the picture and know what we're talking about, rather than having to think. Okay, here is the beta equivalence class in orange. Okay, and here in gamma is the pink equivalence class. So what we want to prove is that if you take alpha, 
and you add it to the equivalence class beta, you'll get some third equivalence class. If you then add that third equivalence class to gamma, we want to prove that that's the same as if you take the alpha equivalence class and add it to beta plus gamma, like that. Okay, so we want to prove associativity. So, all we then need to do is go to our laws for how we add these equivalence classes together. So, we need representatives from each one. So, let's say that our representative from alpha is A over B, our representative of beta is C over D, and our representative of gamma is, let's say, E over F. Okay, so, if we perform this addition, we need to work out um, which equi well, we need to work out which fraction uh, we're going to try and find the equivalence class within. Okay, I haven't said that right. Okay, so let me do it, and then I'll explain afterwards. Okay, right, so if we want to add alpha to beta, how do we do that? Well, what we need to do is find an equivalence class which contains the fraction that we will construct from these two representatives here. So, the fraction that we'll construct from these two representatives a plus B plus C over D, but of course this doesn't mean anything. Really what we're doing is combining these two fractions, two representatives together, to get a third rep, uh, fraction, okay, which is AD plus BC over uh, BD, like that, and then we go to some equivalence class which will have that fraction in, okay, so let's say it's this equivalence class here, so let's say this is the equivalence class of alpha plus beta, okay, so I'll colour that in in turquoise and it contains this new fraction that we've constructed from these two representatives uh, in the alpha and the beta equivalence class. Now, if we want to add alpha plus beta to gamma, all we need to do is take this representative that we now have from this equivalence class and add it, well, combine it with this representative from this third equivalence class. So we need to combine it with E plus F. Now, how do we do that? Well, we'll get AD plus BC times F plus, and then we need to multiply these two together, so we'll get B, D, E, and strictly speaking, of course, I should be very careful about which ones are going first, so strictly speaking, I should put B, D multiplied by E like that, okay, and then we want it over B, D multiplied by F like that. Okay, and then we would find the equivalence class which contains this fraction, and that's the answer to the problem here. So now what we need to do is construct fractions in this order and prove that the fraction that we get from doing it like this is going to be equivalent, well, it's going to be in the same equivalence class at least as the fraction here, if not the actual same fraction. Okay, so let me get another piece of paper. So now what we're going to do is we're going to add alpha to beta plus gamma. Okay, so we need to take representatives from these two equivalence classes. Remember, we called the representative of beta C over D, and we called the representative of gamma E over F. We need to combine those two together to get CF plus DE over DF. We then need to take the representative from alpha, which is A over B, and combine this together with this new fraction here, CF plus DE DF. Okay, and when we do this, we get A times DF, and again, I should be very careful, strictly speaking, um, I should say it's A times D times F, plus B times CF plus DE ta over B times DF. Okay, right, so let's try and understand why that's the same thing as this other one. So what did we get here? We now need to prove that AD plus BC F, and we've got a very nice thing here, because it's actually going to equal the exact same fraction. It's not even just a member of the same equivalence class, it's actually the same fraction. So we're not going to have much trouble here at all. Okay, so all we now need to do is show that these two are related to each other, i.e. they're in the same equivalence class, but we're going to be able to show more than that. We're going to be able to show that the actual fraction that you get is exactly the same. So let's do this then now. So, um, Firstly, let's multiply both of these brackets out. So, let's start with, let's call this one, this was the second one, so I'll call this the second one, let's call this the first one. Okay, so we'll start with the first one. Okay, so first one is going to be reduced to A, D, times F, plus B, C, times F, plus B, D, times E, over 
BD times F, and I might as well reassociate that now to B times DF to get it the same as the denominator down there. Okay, now let's multiply out uh, this second one here, okay, uh, and we'll get from this one, what will we get? We'll get A times DF, okay, uh, then we'll get plus B times CF, plus B times DE, over, whoops, B times DF. Okay, now you'll see that if you just reassociate a few things, you don't even need to reorder things. Uh, you just need to use associativity a few times and show that those two are exactly the same thing. Okay, so that therefore shows that the answer of uh, alpha plus beta plus gamma is the same as if you first add these two equivalence classes and uh, then add this equivalence class here. So it's going to work, basically. Associativity works. Okay, because associativity on the level of the integral domain in both addition and multiplication works. Right, then we need to show inverses. Okay, so third property then now. We need to show that everything has an additive inverse. Okay, right. So we need to show that for all um, alpha, so for any equivalence class alpha, there is another equivalence class, negative alpha, which will add to alpha to give the identity equivalence class. Okay, well we know what this must be basically. So if we draw a picture here, okay, if this is the set containing all fractions, and then we've got it in equivalence classes like this. So if we take any old equivalence class, alpha, okay, so let's say this is alpha, and then we've got some representative of alpha here, which is A over B, then uh, basically there must be another equivalence class which contains the element negative A over B, okay, where negative A is the additive inverse of A in the original domain, okay, and we'll call this equivalence class which contains negative a over b, negative alpha, and then if we use these two representatives uh, of these two equivalence classes and add them together, okay, then what will we get? Well, if we add these two equivalence classes together, alpha plus negative alpha, well, what we can do is we can use these two representatives so we can combine these two fractions, okay, and how do we combine these two fractions? Well, we take a, b, and then we put, add it on to b times negative a over um, b squared there, b times b. Right, okay, now a, b plus b times the, add, sorry, the additive inverse of a, well, what we can do is we can factor out the b by distributivity, okay? So we'll obviously have to apply commutativity to this and say that this is b times a. And then we can factor out the b and get that this is b times a plus the additive inverse of A, okay, over B times B. Then what we can do is say that this is just going to equal the additive identity, and therefore if we're multiplying the additive identity by anything, that's going to give zero. So we get zero over B times B, which is obviously an element of this identity equivalence class E, which is everything where you ha have zero in the numerator, and then whatever you want in the denominator. So, there will always be an equivalence class which contains uh, this fraction, basically, that will combine with uh, one of the representatives of your equivalence class to give um, a, a member of the identity equivalence class, okay? And therefore, uh, because we know already that addition is well defined, so whatever representative of this equivalence class you pick, and whatever uh, representative of this equivalence class you pick, it must always uh, equal a member of the same equivalence class. So we know that these two, uh, therefore, are going to combine always to give uh, the identity equivalence class. So we've got additive inverses now. So all we finally need to show, to show that it's um, a Bean group, is we need to show commutativity. So commutativity is the next property. Now this shouldn't be too hard. This should just follow from commutativity of addition and multiplication in the integral domain. So we need to prove that if you take one uh, equation equivalence class and you want to add this to another equivalence class that this is the same thing as if you take the beta equivalence class and add it to the alpha equivalence class. Okay, right. So how do you do this? Well, draw our trusty picture again. So here is our set of fractions with our equivalence classes splitting it up into uh, partitions. Okay, so we have these 
two equivalence classes, alpha and beta, here. And how do we add them together? Well, we take one representative of alpha, which is A over B. Well, we'll just generically call it A over B. And we'll take a representative of beta, which we'll call C over D. And then we combine these two together. So we'll combine A over B with C over D to make a new fraction, which is AD plus BC over BD. So I write this addition here, but really you should note that this just means combine them, okay? Combine, okay, and it means this, basically. When I write that, it means make me this, uh, which you can do, basically, because you can make this numerator and you can make this denominator, okay, just using the integral domain operations. Right, okay, so we then need to find whichever equivalence class contains this fraction, so let's say it might be here, okay? Right, now if we wanted to add beta to alpha, what we'd do is we'd combine them in a different way. We'd take the representative of beta first, and then we'd uh, add it to the representative of alpha. Well, we'd combine it in this opposite way, so we'd get instead CB plus, sorry, DA, that should be, over DB. So now all we need to do is apply commutativity. So firstly, uh, let's apply commutativity of multiplication to swap all of these rounds. So we'll swap B and C round. Then we'll swap A and D round. And then finally we'll swap B and D round. And then we'll use commutativity of addition to swap these two round to get that this is AD plus BC over BD, like that. Okay, right, so that proves that addition of these two equivalent... Excuse me addition of these two equivalence classes together is also going to obey commutativity. Okay, right. In the next video, what we'll do is we'll move on to uh, the multiplicative properties that need to be obeyed, okay? So we'll look at the multiplicative identity, we'll look at multiplicative associativity, we'll look at multiplicative inverses uh, and commutativity, and then finally we'll go on to uh, look at distributivity. Okay, right, so see you for the next video.